choosing the right equipment can be difficult in World of Tanks, but it definitely doesn't have to be. And today's video is going to showcase all of the different types of equipment that you need to use on your tanks, which ones that you probably shouldn't use, what equipment is best for each tank class, and of course, leave it down to you at the end of the day to pick your specific equipment to various different tanks. And of course, this should hopefully guide you as to how you should be kitting out your tank with the equipment. Now it doesn't take a genius to work out that equipment is super super vital for all of your tanks if you want to be performing at the highest level and even if you're not trying to perform at the highest level you have a variety of other things that you can do to improve your chances of being able to perform better to be able to be more consistent within World of Tanks and that's kind of what we're after today. Now to start this video off I want to give you a kind of a few caveats as to what these equipment builds are for. These are for your traditional tank class tanks. They don't include specific novel tanks. So for example, if you maybe can't use certain equipment on one specific tank, I'm not gonna be able to go through all of them within the game. However, it will give you a good indication as to the types of equipment that you should be using, which ones are very mediocre and pretty much bad. And yeah, hopefully you'll get a good understanding. So first things first, let's start with tank destroyers. These are the ones that probably impact tank destroyers the most and can be used really, really effectively within the game. And what do I mean by that? Well, basically with tank destroyers, because of the kind of aspect of them being that they typically have very, very good guns, they also typically have very, very good camo, albeit some of them don't. So what you can kind of take advantage of with this tank class is the ability to boost up the strong characteristics of the tank. You either go one of two routes when picking equipment, and this applies to all of them, not just tank destroyers, but tank destroyers in particular. Um, if you pick the specific one in which you can boost up the strong characteristics of a tank, then you can make it super, super amazing at the role it was designed to play. However, maybe you want to be a bit more all-rounder-ish, and so you want to pick equipment that is going to boost up the kind of negatives of the tank or minimize the kind of bad aspects of the tank. And that is exactly how you should be using equipment. You can either pick to boost it up or pick to negate the negatives of the tank. Now then, for example, the E25 in the background, we all know that this, if you've been playing World of Tanks for any length of time, is a super sneaky tank. So do you go full sneak mode and do you kind of remove the aspect being something like the traction system? And what you can actually see if we remove that, a top speed goes down and we've actually got really, really amazing vision range and we've got great still concealment. So. Do you want to boost up that concealment even more? Maybe then pick to actually have concealment. You'll notice that the still concealment of the tank dropped by 90, which means that the still concealment of the E25 right now with the equipment added, and it's a very cheap one as well, might I add, if you're running low on credits, uh, advanced concealment is always one that I kind of go for if I'm very limited to credits. Luckily, I'm not in that position currently, uh, but I have been many, many a time. Um, and you can see that the still concealment here has actually dropped significantly, which means that we won't get detected as often within the game. And this is super crucial for your tank destroyers, especially the stealthy ones, ones that don't have armor. And therefore you want to be picking either advanced concealment or an advanced optics. If you're going for more of a spotting build and being able to stay undetected, use the bush mechanics in the game to be able to remain kind of uh, not necessarily at the back, but get into positions that a lot of tanks probably wouldn't be able to do on World of Tanks console. And therefore you can perform better, you can be better at spotting, you'll get used to it, and therefore you can perform. Now one thing that is pretty much a staple for all of the tanks that I play regardless is Advanced Loader. And this is basically a way in which you can boost up the damage per minute of your tank and obviously for those of you that know what that is is basically how much damage you deal in a set given time because you can reload quicker if you can reload quicker you can fire quicker if you can fire quicker you can deal more damage to an opponent that you're facing and therefore in all intents and purposes if you're on the same amount of health 
in the exact same tank and you, one of you had advanced loader and one of you didn't and you were penning each other every single time, you would be 10% quicker to take out the hit points of the opponent and therefore you would win the engagement. Obviously that never really happens in the game but it still applies. If you're playing against something that you're able to pen then you'll basically be able to take them out 10% quicker and it might even mean that you take one less shot comparatively so it's really really important crew skill slash uh, equipment it is basically in order to reduce that kind of uh, rate of fire that or increase your rate of fire reduce the reload time of the tank and that is the same for the rapid loading crew perk as well so yeah just a little bit of an addition there so i always have both of those on if available if it's not available you know you can pick something like improved ventilation uh, if you have the option if you're not in a open top tank because some of them don't actually have the ability to put improved ventilation hence why it's only available to kind of um, tanks that would need ventilation not open top so yeah really really good uh, perk to have there and of course you could go with things if you're in a super slow tank destroyer and that is the really negative um, kind of addition to the game or the problem that you're having with it then by all means you could add in the traction system or the advanced powertrain to boost it up uh, and then boost up that reload or alternatively if you're just after the spotting build like we've talked about i pretty much use this in all of my tds i mean i could pick some random ones from that i've got set up so uh, we could have a look and i'm pretty sure almost all of them have the same sort of setup you can see here the scorpion um the j panther very much the same except we went with uh, improved ventilation on this one uh, and basically all of them have the similar sort of setup because ultimately world of tanks doesn't change a whole lot between the various different tanks and one thing I want to note to you guys is that there's very limited point in a lot of the perks that are in the game for example the advanced gun laying drive is almost pointless because it doesn't really improve the accuracy all you have to do is kind of aim for like 0.1 of a second longer and often in that time because you'll already be aiming at a target and waiting to reload then it doesn't actually make a difference whatsoever in reinforced ammo rack pretty much pointless uh, like as a equipment it's not like it's so specific and niche that it's never really going to help you out in the most part advanced suspension same little sort of thing um spool liner can be very situational and we'll talk about that later on you've got reinforced fuel tank um which is literally almost pointless um and then we've got advanced reload which is very novel and niche but we'll talk about that later as well so yeah we'll get into all of kind of the novel and niche perks but yeah ultimately the key ones that you kind of want in pretty much all of them is advanced optics advanced concealment advanced loader uh, improve ventilation if possible, uh, traction system, advanced power terrain, maybe spool liner and maybe advanced reload dependent on the tank that you're playing. So that's kind of it. I guess in terms of um, heavy tanks we'll kind of move on to those and let you know what you should be picking in general with heavy tanks. Now for me personally, because they're a heavy tank, you're not really going to be trying to outspot. You can have a bit more of an aggressive uh, kind of loadout. And what I mean by that is that you can effectively boost all of the kind of aspects of the vehicle that lead to more damage or being able to um, consistently do more damage or being able to be more accurate. And that by what that basically what I mean is that I'm picking improved ventilation to basically boost the crew performance. I'm picking advanced loader to deal more damage. I'm picking gun stabilizer to make sure that my shells hit where I'm aiming and therefore I don't bounce as many and therefore I do more damage. So it's all about really being consistent with your damage output. And that's what these equipment do and that's kind of the key main ones that i'll pick if i'm in a super slow heavy maybe i'd swap out something like ventilation for advanced powertrain or or advanced um or traction system um but yeah i typically don't usually divert away from this unless i'm in a tank or a heavy tank that maybe has actually okay view range and maybe i would swap out improved ventilation for advanced optics as well just to boost up that view range i'm sure that there's a few tanks in my arsenal that have advanced optics case in point the t77 
you can see there we're picking it and that's ultimately because I cannot take advanced loader on any auto loaders within the game because it's not actually a feature that you can boost your DPM with an auto loader with a uh, kind of advanced loader so that's why you're seeing the advanced optics here and therefore is a bit of a niche kind of topic and you see that with pretty much all of the auto loaders. Uh, if you, <laughs> case in point here as well, you know, that's the kind of route that you should be going down. It's not rocket science. Trust me, if you play this game any length of time, you'll know um, these kind of equipments are pretty much bog standard between any of the players in the game. There will be slight variations where maybe someone wants to use, um, you know, instead of improved ventilation, maybe they'd actually rather have, I don't know, camo net or something like that. But to be honest with you, that's pretty much the extent of it it's not really much of a difference you'll always be picking gun stabilizer if it's available to you because the accuracy is the key thing on world of tanks being able to make sure that you can consistently hit where you're actually aiming can be one of the biggest things for world of tanks and why you see on pc a lot of players are kind of limited by the accuracy of some of the tanks and therefore the better ones are typically more accurate on the move doing all of that sort of stuff and therefore you will do better now talking about medium tanks because that's next on the list we have a very similar sort of setup however with medium tanks I always go with a more um, kind of spotting build because that's typically how I play but remember it's not always about picking um, the maybe optimal setup for the tank that you're playing in sometimes it's actually about picking the optimal set out for the tank that you're playing in with relation to your own playstyle. So for example, if I'm a super aggressive player that wants to be up close and personal, I'm going to want all of the bonuses to my gun handling. Therefore, improved ventilation, advanced loader and gun stabilizer are going to be the best ones for that tank. But if I'm wanting to play a bit more all round, I want to get some spotting damage, I would pick advanced optics, gun stabilizer, an advanced loader. If I want a specific camo build, which I've gone with here with the M26 Pershing, I would go with advanced optics, advanced camo, and the gun stabilizer. And even if maybe you didn't want the gun accuracy and you're purely going for spotting damage, you'd actually put improved ventilation on just to get boost to the camo uh, due to the crew performance boost here. So that's kind of the ways in which you can go about it. And that pretty much applies to all medium tanks in the game. They're very much as the name implies, medium. They're kind of available to use any kind of sort of setup and that is exactly how you should play them. Now remember, most medium tanks, you don't want to be taking any of the perks that we've talked about um, or the equipment, I should say, um, like advanced repair system. It's pretty much pointless. Um, spool liner, uh, advanced gun laying drive, all of them, they apply in the same way. They're pretty much pointless within the game. Same as advanced armor, reducing the damage that you're taking from a tank is one of the worst aspects that I think I can even come up with in World of Tanks because why would you want to take more damage when you can literally boost the amount of damage that you're doing by 10% which is two times better um, and the same being with shell accuracy you get a 20% boost to shell accuracy which means that you're probably going to hit a hell of a lot more accurate which means that you can deal more damage and that is more important than being able to reduce the damage because ultimately if you're taking damage that means you've kind of messed up or you've done something wrong or maybe um, you know you knew at that point that you're going to take damage so it doesn't even matter so that's kind of the way in which I think about it and having advanced armor is is almost like a, a serious no-go for me personally as a player maybe it's worth it in like something like a mouse but even then I just don't think it's worth it at all I'd rather be able to dish out more damage when I finally get to the tanks that I'm supposed to be fighting than I would trying to reduce it so medium tanks kind of all done and dusted albeit there is one thing that I kind of want to talk to you about and that is tanks that are specifically to do with ramming and this is where the spool liner comes in because the spool liner will reduce the amount of ramming damage that you're receiving and also explosion defense explosion defense don't worry it's not artillery if they pen you you will still lose all of your health because console but what this is, is that actually when you ram into someone, you will deal 50% less damage to yourself. Really, really good. 
definitely something that you can use on a tank like the Panzer V4, one that is super heavy, super quick, and that pretty much anything you ram you're going to be heavier than. Don't take it in a light tank. It is the most pointless skill that you're going to ever use in a light tank because you should never be ramming anything in a light tank unless you're playing like a really heavy light tank like a Chinese one and your sole purpose is to ram other light tanks so don't really go doing that but very very novel and unique um, and therefore you know with this build because it's a ramming one we've gone to just boost up the speed so we can ram them harder and therefore get more damage from the ramming of course that's exactly what most Panzer V4 players will do and then they can join it with things like commander perks that can actually reduce the amount of damage that you're receiving and also increasing the amount of damage that you're dealing to the opponent. So it's kind of a mismatch of all of these different kind of aspects of tanks. Remember, some medium tanks are actually more like heavy tanks and therefore put equipment on them like you should. Um, and some heavy tanks are more like mediums and therefore use the medium kind of type of equipment and play it in that sort of way there is no defined exact way that you can put equipment on your tank there are just equipment styles and choices that are typically the best all round to put on all of your tanks and that is exactly what I do if I think it's not working or there's slight tweaks that I feel like are going to benefit maybe I'll do them maybe I won't maybe it's because I'm playing badly and I'm not just gonna uh, you know pick the equipment and it's going to make me suddenly a god tier player in a tank because equipment albeit is very very vital in you being able to be super competitive within the game it is not going to turn you from a player that has like 46% win rate into someone that has like 60% win rate. It doesn't work. You may even only increase your chances of winning by like half of a percent, which may seem bad. But trust me, half of a percent means quite a lot in terms of the game. That is one in every what like it, trust me over a long period of time equipment will help you get better it enables you to be more competitive and you definitely won't get taken out as much and that's really where i think equipment comes in clutch and probably one of the most important classes that can use uh, equipment is light tanks and if you're not going to use equipment on anything and you play light tanks all of the time then yeah i would 100 percent recommend putting on equipment and that is because when you play a light tank there are so many disadvantages that you kind of you can't negate them all and therefore what you have to do is boost up all of the aspects of the tank that are superb which means that most of the time you're picking advanced optics advanced concealment and anything that's going to boost your view range or alternatively if you're kind of like a hybrid of a bit of a damage dealer and also a light tank that's going to be able to spot then you'll typically use things like gun stabilizer advanced optics advanced concealment or maybe you'd swap out gun stabilizer for advanced loader you know it's down to you as to what you decide and what you think is going to be best obviously one of the key aspects that I probably should have talked about is actually look at the statistics of the vehicle that you're playing because if you're picking a vertical stabilizer but actually the accuracy of the tank is superb anyway maybe you don't need the vertical stabilizer and actually maybe you'd be better off being able to deal more damage more often and not really have that boost to shell accuracy so yeah take that into account when you're thinking of light tanks but ultimately the best perks are advanced optics advanced concealment and of course maybe you're going with ventilation advanced loader or gun stabilizer the kind of third option is usually down to you and just make it up as you kind of go along and one thing I want to add in is that make sure that you are, if you're actually trying to get better at the game, put on camouflage. It gives you an extra 3% bonus to your camo, which means that, yes, it might seem small, but it's 3% more than anyone else if they don't have camo. So, yeah, it will help you out in the grand scheme of things. So that is all of the equipment. Artillery are a completely different breed. I mean, we could go into it effectively. All you want to put on artillery is the aiming speed, which is about the only kind of benefit that this perk will give, or equipment, I should say, is going to give any tank is that artillery because of the such a long aim time. Um, then, yeah, it might actually help them because you're always having to move your aimer um, and the dispersion of artillery is terrible. Then, yeah, it does actually help. And, of course, improve ventilation and then... Yeah, there's literally nothing else that really can be <laughs> beneficial. Um, 
Of course you can put in advanced loader which is almost a must and if you're playing something like the T92 I take advanced reload which allows me to swap between rounds and it means that I can fire either AP, Hesh or not Hesh but HE the premium of course no one ever fires the standard in the T92 because it's just flat out worse um, and therefore I think that that kind of showcases everything that you really need to know about artillery uh, equipment there's nothing too major and of course if you've got all of the equipment kind of knowledge from playing mediums lights tank destroyers heavy tanks you'll pretty much be able to come up with your idea as to the t92 um, artillery pieces alike so hopefully this video was a good one for those of you to kind of take a little bit of an in-depth guide on all of the variety of different classes it trust me it's not a brain box move I already know it's basically the same equipment applies to almost every tank that you're playing in the game. There are definitely ones that you have to pick, like Advanced Loader if you can, Vertical Stabilizer, and then the rest is kind of down to you. Um, but yeah, choose the ones that we've kind of specified in this video, but hopefully that gave you a good indication. Of course, if you like this video and maybe you want to watch some more, then I really do recommend you check out the How to Get Better at World of Tanks, which goes into... A lot of detail into various different mechanics within the game and also coming up soon will be a full rundown of the commander system and all of the perks associated with world of tanks which ones you should pick similar to this in terms of the equipment so hopefully you do stick around and of course like the video if you did and i hope that you'll join me in one of those videos on screen right now goodbye